Welcome to the Millionaire Maker Show, a podcast helping online coaches monetize their life's work and scale their businesses to create more time, more money, more freedom, and more impact. Now, with over 20 years of business building, coaching, and consulting experience, here's your host, author, speaker, and creator of the Millionaire Maker Coaching Funnel, Lindsay Anderson. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to this episode of The Millionaire Maker Show. I am your host, Lindsay Anderson, and I'm looking forward to today's episode. If if you've ever asked yourself the following question, hey, self, what exactly do I need to be posting on social media in order to attract those right fit clients? How do I actually stand out above the noise and make myself be seen so that my one true client will actually reach out to me and I can be heard on social media? Well, in today's episode, I have your answer. And we're going to be talking about social media and how to really show up on social media so you can count on social media being a high quality lead source for your coaching business. Now, in previous episodes of the Millionaire Maker Show, I've addressed several ways in which you can get high quality leads for your business. We talked about how search engine optimization, that's going to take nine months and a team. For most coaches, that's out of reach. You have yourself launches, which you can really only do three times a year. That's going to put you on the revenue roller coaster. And what most coaches want is just a nice, even lead flow that they can count on. Another option you have is relationship marketing, which in 2023 is so important in your coaching business, but it can be very unreliable. People who have sent you referrals before, sometimes those lead sources dry up and those relationships take a long time to really nurture and master. And so really that comes down, you have paid ads, which If you've been listening to me for long, you know I have two sides of my business. One side, which is the Build and Monetize Agency, where we help coaches scale from six to seven figures. We do a lot of done-for-you work in the agency, done-for-you social media posting, and launch support and design and execution, as well as running a lot of paid ads. But unless you're at a certain point in your coaching business and you really have a process, running ads can be very a very expensive proposition that can lead to absolutely nothing on the other side unless you team up with an agency like mine that really understands what they're doing. And so in today's day and age, the best way to find high quality leads for your coaching business is really social media. Now, I hear what you're saying, okay? Social media, what a waste of time. There's nobody out there. It's completely oversaturated. Or how can I create consistent content that actually stands out above all of these other coaches that have flooded the marketplace since the pandemic? And how do I actually keep up without being overwhelmed? And then Another problem people have with social, and I can't even describe how heartbreaking this is when people come to me in this situation, they'll say, Lindsay, I have a big social media following. However, nobody's signing up for coaching. So a lot of times people will get into the the mode of posting a lot on social and building up a following, but that following isn't full of right fit clients. And In today's episode, I'll be addressing what you need to be posting on social media, how you need to be showing up on social media so that it can become a very valuable lead source for you. Now, before I hop into today's episode and give you all of the goodies, I want to make sure that you're aware that I have a free guide and it it follows a lot of what I'll be talking about today. It's called Fill your coaching programs like clockwork with my simple social content strategy. And if launching has you burned out, if you're sick of low quality leads and your coaching program enrollments are not where they need to be, 
make sure you head over to contentthatconverts.me slash clockwork and download this guide and it'll walk you through a lot of the things that I'll be talking about in today's episode. So there's one fact that you've got to know about social media, okay? And that is number one, if you're going into social media with a really bad attitude that it's a waste of time, if you're doing what I call a content drop and run where you're having maybe a VA or a team member just post content out there and you're not spending time out there, however you're approaching social media is exactly what you're going to get out of it. And so I would urge you to look at your attitude, how you're approaching social media, and really try to change that because it's going to make a big difference in what you're going to get out of social. On today's episode, I'll be covering what to post on social. And just so you know, it doesn't matter if you're on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook posting these things. It's a tried and true method that if you align to what I'm saying today and you show up with social media in a service-based attitude, not in a, I don't have time for this kind of situation, you can make social media your very best lead source for high quality leads. Fact is, your perfect customer is on social media. Everybody's on social media, and that includes high paying clients. But there's a lot of mistakes that coaches make that attract these low quality clients. I call them lower left hand quadrant people. And And it's easy because these lower left-hand quadrant people, the people that don't want to pay you what you're worth, they so happen to be the ones that have time to be commenting on social media and, and doing like showing up, you know, in mass ways. And so as a coach, when you're posting on social, it's very, very tempting to start talking to them because they're the ones who's talking back. And it's a huge mistake that I'm going to be helping you with some tips today to really overcome. What you need to know is this. Approach social media with an attitude of, hey, they're real people. This is worth my time. I always like to call social media a black book. I call it my social media black book strategy where you're actually storing people and using it as a piece of client relationship management software. And when you approach it like that and not in a content drop and run, oh my gosh, I have to do this kind of attitude, you will see you can attract and enroll high quality people off of social media all day long. So what's the secret? Here's the secret, okay? Now, don't go turning off the podcast right now. It's going to come down to three ingredients that you have to understand. And the first one is probably why you might want to turn off this podcast, and that is niching. And I know you've heard it before. I know you hear people and marketers like me talk to you about niching all the time, and it's really important. But one reason why niching doesn't work is because Most people are not teaching the other two puzzle pieces, and that is messaging and positioning. So I'm going to be going over those because once you really understand these three ingredients and then you show up in social media in the right way, you acknowledge people as people, you allow the algorithms to work in your favor because you're out there and you're interacting and you're understanding what who is out there and acknowledging them as people and you have a good attitude about it, your whole social media game can really turn around. So let's talk about niching. Niching. You've heard it before. This is who is the person that you serve. What are their demographics? How old are they? What do they like to do? What are their problems? Really, who is this person? This is very important for you to know. Highly recommend 
You make a list and have this super crystal clear. The second is going to be messaging. And that is, how do you talk to this person? What kind of, how do you show up on social media? How are you dressed? What are you saying? What are the kind of words that you're using? Please understand this about fishing for those perfect clients on social media. It's no different than fishing for fish. If you're if you're searching for a specific kind of fish, you're going to use a specific kind of bait. And the same goes for how you're showing up and you're messaging on social media. You have to have the bait right in order to attract those right fit clients. And that really comes down to messaging, how you're coming across, the words you're using, and how you're talking to people. And the third really important puzzle piece is all about positioning. And that is, how do you compare to other people in the marketplace? Are you low quality and low cost? You don't, like, are you selling low cost memberships or low cost courses? And are you seen as like the low cost leader in your industry? Because that's exactly the kind of person that you're going to attract. Now, if you want to, and I recommend this for coaches, you really want to hit more of a high quality and a high cost kind of client, more high touch, more high transformation, and really being able to have that impact on people that I know that you can have. The thing is, so many coaches try to straddle the line between I sell a low cost course, but I really want people in my high ticket program. And on social media, it's coming across as very, very confusing. Well, why would I pay Lindsay high ticket coaching rates when she has a $49 product? And so it is so important for you as a coach to really understand and be clear for yourself how you compare in the marketplace. So those are the three key aspects that you've got to know as you go into creating social media content and attracting those high quality leads on social media. So I already hear what you're saying. I know it's a podcast, but you're like, okay, Lindsay, that sounds great, but how do I do that? And there's a really, really simple way that I teach in my content that converts program that works every single time. And that is called my one true client strategy. And it's as simple as this. You need to find one true client in your experience. The good news is, well, let me start with the bad news. The bad news is you have to have one true client in your experience. The good news is you only need one in order for this strategy to work and in order for you to nail down your niching, messaging, and positioning. So this is all you've got to do. You've got to go and think about it. one true client in your experience. I recommend this be somebody who has paid you well somebody that did not balk at what your coaching rates were. They were ready to throw down that money. Number two, somebody who has the ambition that you are looking for. What you don't want is to have to cheerlead people through your coaching programs because typically they won't get the transformation that you're offering and you won't have a lot of success if all you're doing is cheerleading, which by the way, those Lower left hand quadrant people, the people who buy the $69, $49 products, they typically need a lot of cheerleading. So you don't want to pick a one true client that fits that description. So you got somebody who has paid you, somebody who has the ambition level for which uh, has gone through your coaching program and really, really had that transformation. Number three, somebody, of course, who had the problem that you solve. They came to you. They had the problem. You were able to lead them through your methodology and get real results for them. 
And then finally, communication. Somebody who has communicated with you, they show up to coaching calls, they are, they're like just your, your perfect client. If you're sitting around saying, you know what, self, if I had 60 more Sheilas, okay, 60 more clients just like that, my life would be perfect. This is the kind of one true client that you really want to pinpoint for this exercise. Now, I've been doing high quality lead gen for coaches for the past 15 years, and I know what people do. So I'm going to stop you right there before you make these two incredibly critical mistakes. The first thing people try to do is they try to say, you know what? I am me personally. I am my own one true client. I had that problem. I went through the transformation, my methodology. I would have paid for this. I am my one true client. (laughs) Wrong, okay? It cannot be you. This exercise will not work if it is you because we always think we are more brilliant than we are. We're much too close to our coaching program and our transformation and what we're trying to do for people. We cannot possibly market to ourselves. So if you thought, I'll just use myself for this answer, you don't want to do it because this exercise will not work. The second thing that people really try to do during this exercise is they try to have a Frankenstein version of a couple of their clients. Well, Judy was really great at paying and she had the problem and she got the transformation, but I really loved the way Adele, you know, communicated with me and showed up to coaching calls. So I'm going to take this Frankenstein version of two of these clients and call them my one true client. And the exercise and the solution to your messaging, positioning, and niching problem will not be solved that way. You really have to have one and only one client in your experience that has paid you, that has the ambition level you're looking for, that's received the transformation and has communicated and shown up in that way in order for this exercise to work. So you're going to figure out who this person is and all you have to do is take that one name, whether it be Tebra or Sheila or John, and you stick this thing on a post-it note. I'm not even kidding you. I've been doing this for 20 years. I have it written on my whiteboard because as a human, we always like we have to be able to stay on the straight and narrow and writing this thing on a post-it note has been the only way that I've been able to teach people and have success really attracting those leads online. So you're going to write their name on a post-it note and then the task is simple. Every single time you go to post on social media, all you have to do is look at that post-it note and say to yourself, self, what would Judy say about this post? Would this be relevant to her? Would she be interested in this? Or would she just swipe on by and say, I don't know why Lindsay's talking about this. It's not relevant to me. And so it It's as simple as that. You have one true client. Then every time you show up on social media, you ask yourself, what would my one true client think of that? And really watch the quality of your social media following really, really increase. Now, let me give you a real world example of this. I have a client. Her name's Sheila. She's a health and wellness coach, and she really could not crack the lead gen code. She was attracting lower left-hand quadrant people because she was selling like a $37 program. She offered higher ticket coaching programs, but the only people that were signing up for those were people who were referred to her. And she really was having a hard time being profitable in her coaching business. Now, 
she was pretty, she was doing really well on social media, but everybody on social media were these tire kickers, people who did not want to invest in coaching. So I walked Sheila through the one true client process. She changed her messaging. She understand her positioning. And within a matter of two weeks, she ended up selling $37,000 in high ticket coaching, all from social media. What is my point? The point is, is that these high ticket, high quality clients are definitely in your experience. You, first of all, have to believe that. And second of all, you have to be using the right bait in order to attract these clients. And the very best way to know what that bait is, is to identify this one true client of yours and speak to them and only them. Now, there's a real benefit also to picking one, one true client. And that is you have to understand on social media, people are consuming this content alone. And so you want to be showing up as social media very much feeling like you're talking to one and only one person. It's as simple as a change from saying, oh, hey, everybody, welcome to my Instagram account and pretending it's just you and your Sheila there on Instagram and just starting in on what you have to say. You know, the number one problem coaches face is high quality lead gen. You want people to feel like you're talking to them and only them. Know this is coaching and high ticket coaching is definitely sold through intimacy, especially as we go into 2023 with chat GPT and all these automated funnels and these big fat launches like they're just not working as well as they used to because people are demanding intimacy. They're demanding high touch. They're demanding to know who you are and really identifying that one true client and speaking to her. It's really case closed, problem solved. And if you're saying, well, Lindsay, that's just one person in my experience. Uh, or maybe there's no others that have these thoughts or speak in this way or are just like my my Sheila or my Judy. And I'm here to tell you is that people in the world, do they just fall into big classifications, okay? They've gone through, they have a similar problem, they feel a similar way about it. And so really just pinpointing one person is the solution to attracting more and more of those right fit clients. So that brings me to the next question that I hear you asking, which is, that's fair. Okay, I have my one true client, but what do I post on social media in order for me to attract them? And that's best boiled down into what I call my VEMS model. That's V E M S. And as you approach social media, if you're tackling your VEMS, you and and speaking to your one true client it will really answer all of your high quality lead gen problems there on social media so let's break it up v is for vibe and that's really your unique voice your personalities your values and brand and in the day and age of chat gpt this is more important than ever people want to coach with a person somebody that they can really resonate with. Now, for me, I'm highly caffeinated. I get really excited. That is definitely my vibe. And I let that show on social media. That appeals to some people. It doesn't appeal to others. Either way, you want to be showing that online so that people understand your unique voice. You do not want to be part of this regurgitated, you sound like everybody else. It's really the key and the linchpin for standing out above the crowd, especially with ChatGPT and how easy it is to generate and manufacture content these days. 
the E in the VEMS model has to do with experience. Every single time you have a success in your coaching business, you want to be sharing that online. Know this is that storytelling sells coaching. And if people can see themselves in your previous clients, they will be more likely to show up for coaching. So share these stories because it's really how we can communicate how the transformation that we create um, happens. And so share it over and over. Many coaches feel like, oh, you know, I don't want to give out names and I, I don't want to be tooting my own horn. And if I'm just always talking about myself, but I would say to that, if you're not talking about yourself, nobody is going to be talking about you. So it's up to you to share your experience levels and to really share these stories. And you don't even have to use names. It can be as simple as, I had a client who came to me with X problem. Over the course of six weeks, we worked on X, Y, Z, and she just called me and said she had this big transformation. A simple story like that can really attract your one true client and allow people to see the transformation you make. Next is M for methodology. People want to coach with a plan. They don't want to just show up on Zoom calls with you and and just chat. They actually want to know, oh my gosh, Lindsay actually has a plan for how I can generate high quality leads on social media and enroll them into my coaching programs. She's constantly talking about this on her social media. I understand she has a plan and I want access to that plan. So on social media, you always want to be talking about your methodology, letting people know that you have a plan, what the step-by-step process looks like, and that it's not guesswork for you, but you're a professional at this. You understand where they are, where they're going, and all the steps they need to take in between to actually do that. And then finally, skills. This is quite typically what most people are posting on social media. This is how you help people with mindset or little tips and tricks on how to get where they're going. Now, it's important to put your skills out there, but you want to really blend it with your vibe, experience, and methodology to make the perfect grouping of social media content that can make people know, like, and trust you, understand what you do, and enroll into your coaching programs. So there you have it, folks. Find your one true client on social media. Display your VEMS on social media. Every time you make a post, make sure that your one true client, that it would be relevant to her, that she would resonate with that. And it's as simple as that to start generating high-quality leads on social media. One more thing you got to remember is social media is a quality, not a quantity game. It does not matter how many followers you have. If you're looking at social media like a black book, every if you get a handful of new followers every week, but they are your one true client, you really need to address that as, oh my gosh, I have suddenly five more people that are listening to what I have to say. I'm going to engage with them on social media. The algorithms will definitely play in your favor and continue to show your posts to them and their posts to you. And it will really help you out if you view social media from a very micro level. View social media from a micro level and the macro will take care of itself. So I always like to leave these Millionaire Maker Show episodes with a chat GPT tip. And here is your hot, hot chat GPT tip for today. And that is put a lot of work into the context in which you give chat GPT before you ask it to do something. Please do not roll up to chat GPT 
start a new thread and just say, hey, give me five titles for a masterclass for women in their late 40s who have yo-yo dieting problems. No. When we create chat GPT content, we have very long scripts. These things are like 50 lines long. We store them in a document. We view it very much as an asset. I'm not rolling up to chat GPT trying to come up with this thing from the top of my head every single time I ask it something. No, I have an index. I have some information about my one true client, about my expertise, about what I want it to do. And I copy and paste this information into ChatGPT and I take it really seriously like an asset. I view it as something as I'm going to view this query as something that I put into ChatGPT and then it gives me such great output that I can then hand this off to a team member never having to deal with this one query again, but it will allow you to really rinse and repeat that. So that's my chat GPT tip for creating high quality social media content. Give it a lot of context, store these variables in a document, make it very much a copy and paste process and, and plan ahead and view it as an asset and chat GPT will definitely deliver on the other side. So there you have it. Another awesome episode of the Millionaire Maker Show. Don't forget, I have a free guide for you. If you head over to contentthatconverts.me slash clockwork, you'll get access to my fill your coaching programs like clockwork guide with my simple social content strategy where I cover a lot of the things that we talked about today. So if you're finding a lot of value in the Millionaire Maker Show, I would ask for you to go and leave me a review out there on Apple. That would be really, really fantastic. And I'll see you next week on another episode. Thank you for listening to The Millionaire Maker Show with master business coach and creator of The Millionaire Maker Coaching Funnel, Lindsay Anderson. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.